Why do people like Hu Tao? If your answers are she's cute, she's strong, or she's Megumin, then you're not completely wrong. Hu Tao is an incredibly cute and strong character. She mercilessly ripped away the crown of best pyro DPS from Diluc way back in 2021. And because she's so likable and popular, a lot of people just seem to overlook the more nuanced and solemn side of Hu Tao, which is a side of her that we don't get to see very often. I wouldn't say that she's misunderstood by the fandom or community, just slightly overlooked when it comes to the brilliance of her writing and character themes. Which is a shame because it's one of the best things about Hu Tao as a character, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about the overlooked brilliance of Hu Tao. She's obviously very popular, she is after all the marketing archon of Genshin Impact. And in my State of Female Characters video, I made the mistake of mentioning Hu Tao while talking about the happy-go-lucky girl trope despite how objectively Hu Tao is not that trope at all. Doing that that made it seem that I think she's one of the characters that, for lack of a better word, is yet another generic cute anime waifu. While again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, Hu Tao in reality is just a lot more complex. My main problem with her was just how Hoyo never seemed to bother exploring this more serious side of her and her relationships with other characters. Hence why it's very easy for some people to mischaracterize her as another happy-go-lucky girl when she's a lot more than that. That and I like her and I just just want an excuse to talk about her. I usually start my analysis by going through the character's role in the Archon quest or in the main quest, but Hu Tao is actually never in any of the Archon quests. Which is wild to me considering how popular she is and how she's so closely related to the Archon of Li Wei himself. But she's not the only one that suffers from this considering how Ayato was just missing during the Inazuma Archon quest despite being a very important political figure. But anyway, back to Hu Tao. The way she she was introduced into the game was actually via bulletin boards in Liyue, very similar to the way Ito was introduced in those boards in Inazuma if you remember those, way before she even showed up. And a lot of the posts actually showcased her playful personality, and also how the people of Liyue doesn't seem to like her that much. Fun fact, we also didn't get a trailer for Hu Tao in the 1.3 livestream despite rumors circulating that she would make an appearance. But there was nothing from Hoyo, like absolute crickets, because do correct me if I'm wrong on this, it's actually frowned upon to talk about death during the Chinese New Year, which is the patch that Hu Tao was released way back in 2021. That is until we reached the end of the Lantern Rite season and we got this gem of a trailer. For someone so popular, Hu Tao doesn't actually have a lot of in-game appearances. She only has appearances in story quests, that being her own and Baiju story quests, and several Liyue-centric events such as the Moon Chase Festival, the second and third Lantern Rite where she um, infamously wrapped, and then the Genius Invocation TCG event, and most recently, the Poetry event. Let's talk about her first story quest that came out way back in early 2021. Some people really like her story quest, while some find it a bit lackluster. And actually, I was one of those people. Now, I did play her story quest as soon as it came out. I think I was just tired from the 1.3 Lantern Rite fetch quest and was just burnt out from solving NPC problems, and that's why I didn't really like her story quest. So I revisited the quest and I definitely don't view the quest as negatively as I used to. It has a lot of good moments and it reminded me a lot of this anime, Anohana. I think her quest showed a lot of her personality, why the Wangsheng funeral parlor is so important in Liyue and why the people in Liyue just find her off-putting. And most importantly, it showed how Hu Tao views death in a very different way than most people do. So yeah, I think the quest does have a lot of things to offer. But the problem for me is that while it does showcase a lot of Hu Tao, it was more about Meng and Big G than it was about Hu Tao herself. If you don't remember what her story quest is about, to quickly recap, it's about how Meng, a new undertaker in the Wangsheng funeral parlor, purposely seeks the help of Hu Tao to put rest to his long-deceased friend, Big G. Meng and Hu Tao bump into the traveler at Wu Wang Hill and Hu Tao introduces herself as the director of the Wangsheng funeral parlor and immediately takes interest in the traveler after thinking that they are a part of the adventurer's guild, aka possible future class. Clients. The traveler then witnessed Hu Tao's unusual marketing tactics that put off a lot of people before learning the true reason why Meng was working as an undertaker in the funeral parlor. That being, he's scared that his childhood friend Big G that tragically passed away in an accident decades ago has become an evil spirit. And through Meng and Big G, we do get to witness how Hu Tao was willing to go out of her way to give Big G, who wasn't an evil spirit but still a lingering spirit nonetheless, a proper send-off. Because Hu 
Tao does believe that every human should be given a proper burial and a perfect send-off to the afterlife. We also learn about how Hu Tao purposely keeps regular civilians in the dark about her actual line of work and how she deals with the vengeful residue of ancient gods, which is karmic debt. So to the average person in Liu Wei, karmic debt would be something akin to a curse or bad luck. Now, I wasn't really a big fan of her story quest because back then, I just wanted to know more about Hu Tao and her relationship with very significant characters such as the god of Liu Wei himself and maybe the Yaksha that seems to find her unique sense of humor amusing or her group of friends that she grew up with or her grandfather that shaped her view on life and death itself and her duty to the Wang Xiong funeral parlor. Literally anything about Hu Tao. Now since this story quest came out in 2021 and Genshin has gotten a lot better with its writing especially when it comes to female characters, I'm gonna compare it to other story quests that came out around the same time because it's only fair to do that. So first I'm gonna compare it to Xiao's who was also released around the same patch and honestly it was the same in terms of writing because they both focus on NPCs that I personally found to be not very interesting. Maybe it's just me but I just don't really like the focus on NPCs and quests in general like especially character story quests. NPCs can work if they're tied to the focused character like how Tuser was child's actual brother and how Hans and Venti were both dealing with grief by taking on the form of their deceased friends and how the NPC in Zhongli's story quest was revealed to be under the influence of Ishdaha who was very significant to his past. These ties to the NPCs actually played a part in helping us as the players to understand the character better and also showing us something that we haven't seen before. For example, a child's love for his family in his story quest and Venti's grief and facade. And I think that's why Venti's and child's story quest just feels a lot better written than Hu Tao's. Hu Tao and Meng's parallel was as simple as both of them are dealing with death and also working for the Wang Xiong funeral parlor. But again, the quest does have its moments like it does highlight the importance of the role of the Wang Xiong funeral parlor in Liu Wei and just how seriously Hu Tao takes her job, which is great. But I would argue that the quest still spent way too much time building up Meng and his group of friends while Hu Tao and the traveler are just mostly along for the ride. She's just not as relevant as she should be in her own story quest except for the one fact that she is the only one that can access the border for the final send-off. I would have loved to know more about Hu Tao and I think the story quest didn't really provide as much depth as I personally wanted it to but again it has its moments and I've definitely changed my mind on some things and I can appreciate it a bit more now that I'm not burnt out from NPC fetched quests. Obviously it's kind of unfair to compare it to Venti's story quest given that he is an archon so comparing it to Xiao, Ganyu, and Alpedo's story quest which are all the ones released around the same time, I would say Hu Tao actually has one of the better story quests despite how it focused too much on NPCs instead of Hu Tao herself. But at least it didn't have Star Snatcher and a very boring tax fraud storyline. Now I would even argue that her brief appearance in Baiju's story quest gave us a lot more depth about her as a character than her own story quest did. In Baiju's story quest, Hu Tao showcased a lot more of her beliefs and why she dislikes him for practicing his secret art to heal people, even if it meant that he can save a lot of people from dying. Her behavior in Baiju's story quest alone makes her one of the most complex female characters and it even adds context to why people in Liu Wei tend to dislike her, outside of her very weird marketing tactics, of course. And the people in Liu Wei, including playable characters, think of her as either annoying or off-putting. Similar to real-life Chinese culture, the people in Liu Wei believe that talking about death is bad luck. Hence Hu Tao, whose very job involves death, and as someone who sees death in a very different way, she can come off as very off-putting to a lot of people. Hu Tao is also shown to be very stubborn and headstrong, especially when it comes to her ideology. The first time that I can finally understand why Hu Tao was so disliked by the people in Liu Wei was during Baiju's story quest. Like, I get how she can come off as annoying, being a prankster and all, and she can be insensitive and makes a lot of weird jokes about death as showcased in her own story quest, but it never really got to 
a point where I think that her, the dislike towards her was justified. But oh boy, I understood it during Baiju's story quest. If you're a bit hazy on Baiju's story quest, it was mostly about how Baiju was trying to cure a man, Jia Liang, after finding him trying to jump off a cliff and finding god remains inside his body. Hu Tao, being the director of the Wangsheng funeral parlor, was also present because, well, it's her job to cleanse Liu Wei from god remains that can harm its citizens. Hu Tao reveals that her great uncle was actually Baiju's master and expresses a lot of distaste for Baiju's methods because it goes against the natural cycle of life and she has always suspected Baiju to be researching immortality. At the end of Baiju's quest, Hu Tao states that the only reason she helped Jia Liang who was sick with terminal illness and is being corrupted by God Remains in finding his missing wife was so that she could help him cross over sooner without any unfulfilled wishes. So Hu Tao didn't really help Jia Liang to save his life, she was just trying to maintain the natural order of life and death. We as the players can definitely understand that this is just a part of Hu Tao's personality and her beliefs and her literal job, but to the average person in Liwei like Jia Liang's son, Ayu, this behavior can come off as extremely insensitive or even cruel. And I love how the quest showcased this, it adds a lot of nuance to Hu Tao's actions and highlights something that we haven't seen before, which is the darker side of Hu Tao that's often overlooked and overshadowed by her cheerful personality. Now we actually know that Hu Tao is cheerful in nature and she is the way she is because she understands life and death more than any other mortal in Liyue. Considering how she's raised in a literal funeral parlor and even became the director at age 13, it's not really a surprise to anyone that Hu Tao doesn't really understand social cues like the average person would when it comes to topics like death. She was born into the life of not only having to deal with death on a daily basis but also maintaining the literal border to the other side. To Hu Tao, death is just another part of life, a destination where all humans are headed to and therefore there's really no point in denying it or being afraid of it. Which is why she shoves discount coupons for the funeral parlor to random people because she herself thinks it's not that big of a deal. And this isn't to say that Hu Tao doesn't understand the concept of grief because she has lost a lot loved one. Her grandfather passing away was what we can assume Hu Tao's first experience of devastating grief. I mean, we don't really know where her parents went, but let's assume that they weren't in the picture since the very beginning, since it's implied that her grandfather has always been the main parental figure in her life. So when he passed, she went into the border in hopes that she would see him again for the last time. She stayed there for days, even to the point that she started running out of food and other lingering spirits around her started telling her that she won't find who she she's looking for. Despite this, Hu Tao being the headstrong girl that she is, persevered and kept waiting until an old lady told her that no director of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor has ever lingered near the border after their passing. And in that moment, Hu Tao realized what her grandfather had meant when he'd said, live in life, die in death, follow your heart, do what you can. Which is a quote that I'm personally a fan of. Hu Tao came to the conclusion that her grandfather crossed the border as soon as he'd passed because he had no reason to linger. He had no unfulfilled wishes and had no regrets in life. And with a sense of relief, Hu Tao went home only to discover that she'd also received a vision in her backpack. So with all of that unpacked, it makes a lot of sense that someone like Hu Tao who does whatever she wants, a person who lives by the words live in life, die in death, wouldn't be afraid of death itself. She is living her life to the fullest, completing her duties as the director of the Wang Sheng funeral parlor because she doesn't want to die with regrets. Death to her is the natural cycle of life and is something that we must do to move on from the realm of the living onto the next. Hu Tao doesn't talk or make jokes about death to be quirky or just because she has no respect for it or is obsessed with death. I just personally think she does so because it's not a big deal to her and it's not something that people should be afraid of. Of course, the average human in Liyue would not share the same mentality as her because most of us are not born into a funeral parlor. Most people don't even know that there even is a board and most mortals fear the unknown and just the idea of not being able to see a loved one again is enough to terrify anyone to the core. But not Hu Tao. And it makes Hu Tao very unique as a character and thematically brilliant. Let's talk about Hu Tao in events. While she has appeared in a bunch of events, she has never really been the focus of any of it. And don't get me wrong, even though she's not the focus, she has always been extremely entertaining whenever she appears on screen. The first time that she showed up with Jean Lee in the second lantern ride back in 2022, I nearly cried because finally, finally,
finally we get to see these two together after months of build up even if it was just for a few minutes my other personal favorite moment of Futao during events is actually during the 2023 lantern ride where she hosted an event and brought the most unlikely group of people together considering how there are two archons one yaksha and one descender in that dinner Futao truly outdid herself it's really nice to see her interact with other characters it's just nice to see her period because despite her massive popularity it does feel like she's a filler character in the grand scheme of things yes she has ties to the archon of liyue and monstad and the last yaksha but she is just another liyue citizen that doesn't really have much to contribute to the story outside of showing up in liyue centric events and unfortunately i think it's going to stay that way until zhongli xiao venti or the traveler needs her in some way or she gets dragged into the main plot because of them as this reddit comment would put it she is a director of a funeral home in a game where no one dies which is again a shame because hu tao is one of the most complex female characters in the game i'm gonna talk about her relationship with baiju first because i think they have one of the most interesting dynamics in the game and i think her dynamic with baiju is what gives her a lot of complexity and depth as a character i think they are one of the very few characters that have conflicting views that's actually shown and explored in the game hu tao's best moments as a character can actually be found in baiju's story quest and by that i mean the moments that we get of her in his story quest actually puts her in a completely different light she has always been very headstrong ever since she was a little girl and as a young adult hu tao takes her job as the wang xiong funeral parlor director very seriously she takes it so seriously that it can come off as mean to some and even cruel to others and again as showcased in baiju's story quest hu tao was extremely exasperated at how baiju essentially turned jia liang into another chi chi even though it saved his life and obviously jia liang's family is not happy about this chi chi also obviously despises hu tao because she keeps wanting to put her to rest and this isn't because hu tao is just out to get chi chi to be a prankster or just another quirky thing that she does because she happens to be the director of a funeral parlor in hu tao's eyes chi chi is akin to a lost soul who needs to be put to rest because that's just the natural order of life you die and then you cross over to the other side and even with her strong beliefs hu tao does eventually see that chi chi's will to live is a lot stronger than most humans and has since let her be an exception to the rule but unfortunately after so many attempts in kidnapping chi chi and trying to put her to rest chi chi already hates her to the point that she wants hu tao dead hu tao also detests how baiju keeps violating the natural order of life and it's the reason why she has tried time and time again to bury chi chi because to her someone who's died should be put to rest and shouldn't be allowed to run around aimlessly in the mortal realm where they no longer belong i think it's also why she tries so hard to meet all of her clients wishes so that people can pass on with no regrets her ideology obviously clashes heavily with baiju's because baiju will always try to save someone's life to the best of his ability because he is a doctor he will go to extreme lengths just to save people and even put his own body at risk he's almost like the antithesis for everything that hu tao stands for when someone has a terminal illness or dies she can detach herself from the tragedy of the situation because of how she was raised and her own ideology i don't mean that she doesn't feel sympathy or is heartless she just has a completely different approach to death and i think her dynamic with baiju highlights this perfectly and at the end of the quest hu tao does find out that baiju is indeed seeking immortality and she is obviously not pleased with this she also obviously doesn't know the true reason as to why baiju is seeking immortality and that's why she dislikes him so much because to her all he's doing is just violating the natural order of life and further blurring the line between life and death which is something that has been sacred to her and her family since the days of the archon war speaking of archons we obviously have to talk about her relationship with zhongli next because they are a very wholesome duo i doubt that anyone doesn't know this but hu tao is zhongli's boss she is the one employing him to be a consultant at the wangsheng funeral parlor the first glimpse of hu tao's personality that we ever got in the game was also through zhongli's voice lines about her which is still one of my favorites actually i just find it hilarious that even this old ancient god who has stood the test of time won countless battles and wars even winning a gnosis in the archon war is also one of the two remaining original archons and is somehow still existing 
exasperated when dealing with Hu Tao. And yes, his voice line about her does make it seem like he can't stand her and only tolerates her, but I do think that he just sees her more as a chaotic child rather than someone that he actively dislikes. In the second Lantern ride back in 2022, which was the first time we ever see them interact on screen by the way, it is revealed that Hu Tao and Zhang Li go out for meals together and occasionally go on walks. Besides, based on the cutscenes that we got, it doesn't look like Zhang Li is being forced to sit there against his will. They do seem to genuinely care for one another. It's even mentioned in Hu Tao's voice line about Zhang Li that he is the person that she trusts the most. I don't think we have a lot of interactions between them outside of events. In fact, I don't think we have any, which is a crime in my opinion. But in the moments where they do interact, it does present an interesting dynamic. See, Hu Tao is kind of suspicious of Zhang Li. I don't think she knows he's an Archon, but she definitely knows he's not human. Hu Tao has always been smarter than she lets on, and she refuses to elaborate, even to the traveler when it comes to Zhang Li. There isn't any indication that Zhang Li is aware of Hu Tao's suspicions, but the way he interacts with her is also really funny because he just listens to her and follows along with her antics like a good employee would. Anyway, most of the community have made observations that their dynamic is like that of grandpa and chaotic grandchild. And given what we know about Hu Tao and how she lost her grandfather at an early age, this is a very wholesome canon interpretation. Another immortal being that I want to talk about next is none other than the conqueror of demons himself, Xiao. Prior to this year's Lantern Ride, I think not a lot of people know about Hu Tao and Xiao's friendship because it is mostly hidden behind voice lines. In the most hilarious way, Xiao is one of the two people in Li Wei who actually thinks Hu Tao is funny. The other person being Sing Cho. I just find it funny that he, of all people, is the one that is able to appreciate her sense of humor. Now, I don't know why. Maybe it's because Xiao also deals in death being the last Yaksha and all, and that's why he sees the humor in it. It's never really explored in game about how they actually got to know each other or why Xiao, being the lone wolf that he is, would give her the time of day, but I can only assume that because the Wangsheng funeral parlor does help in the cleansing of the remains of old gods, they would have inevitably crossed paths. But it's really funny to think that Xiao just slowly accepted that Hu Tao will never leave him alone and even agreed to follow her to the lantern ride dinner because she wouldn't stop bothering him. Like she bludgeoned him with her friendship. I think that's very wholesome. And as of the last lantern ride, Hu Tao is also acquainted with Mondstadt's Archon, Venti. I think Hu Tao is the only human character to be directly linked and acquainted to two Archons and original Archons at that. But anyway, over the years, I have seen the community make fun observations about how Venti and Hu Tao have similar personalities. Both are outwardly playful while also knowing a lot more than what they usually let on and how they both annoy the living hell out of Zhang Li. Their story quests are even similar in theme. Both deal with someone who was affected by the untimely death of a loved one and are unable to move on from it. In Venti's, it was Stan Lee or more accurately Hans, while in Hu Tao, it was Meng and his group of friends. In the story quest, both Venti and Hu Tao help their respective NPCs to get closure and move past their grief. Both are handled differently but both are emotional but I just personally feel like Venti's was a lot more impactful because at the end of the quest, we get to see why Stan Lee's story was so important to Venti as a character because it is revealed that it parallels Venti's own history with the Nameless Bard. Both Venti and Hans are taking on the form and identity of their deceased friend. Hu Tao's quest, on the other hand, while emotional and is overall a good story to follow, didn't have the same death as it did for Venti's. While it does touch on how important her role is as the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor director, Hu Tao and Meng's story didn't really have a deeper connection like Venti and Stan Lee did. But hey, that's just my opinion on those things. You can obviously disagree with me. This is more of a wholesome one because Sing Cho, Xiang Ling, and Chuang Yun are Hu Tao's group of close friends. I would assume they're all about the same age and based on the Moon Chase Festival cutscene we got in 2021, it also seemed that they grew up together. They were also the featured four stars in Hu Tao's initial banner in 1.3. While there were some misconceptions about how Hu Tao has no mortal friends and everyone in Li Wei just hates her, this is obviously just not true. Yes, Xiang Ling and Chong Yun's voice line about her are both of them being exasperated with her antics. Despite that, the four of them do seem like they have a genuine friendship. They are seen together during festivals. All of them show up during the dinner that Hu Tao hosted in the 2023 Lantern.
lantern ride too. Now, canonically, Sing Cho is the closest to Hu Tao. They often have rap battles together and share a common interest in writing poetry. Sing Cho is also very mischievous, so I would assume they vibe together a lot. Much to the chagrin of Chang Yun and Xiang Ling. And I think it's very wholesome that Hu Tao still has a group of friends because, again, in Liu Wei, working so closely with death is seen as something that brings bad luck, which is why so many people just try to stay away from Hu Tao. And her marketing tactics definitely also doesn't help her case when it comes to making friends. I think it's an absolute crime that we have gotten so little interactions between the four of them over the years. And that, kids, is why I think Hu Tao is a brilliant character. She has a really interesting lore, backstory, personality, and relationship with other characters. I just wish Hoyo could show more of her so that people will also appreciate the thought that was put into her character writing and her character themes. She's a great pyro DPS, obviously, but she's also one of the most complex female characters in the game. I hope this was at least somewhat entertaining to you. I just wanted to talk about Hu Tao because I like her. So yeah, thanks for watching and let me know what character you want me to talk about next and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!